Hello, welcome to the follow to the webinar. My name is Vesamatte Hartikainen and I'm program manager at Yolla. Uh, this webinar is part of the Self is Always community program. This is the first seminar about about Self is Always in this is series of uh, seminars about Self is and and Self is development. Uh, today I'm going to tell you about using Self is Always. And I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to get more out of your device running Selfies operating system. Uh, we tested this setup yesterday. Uh, there is a slight lag between the video stream and the commentary. So if there's uh, questions for me, it will be maybe 10 seconds before uh, I can answer via the, the web stream. But we have other people online as well. So we have uh, our head of communications, Juhani Lassila, under the Nick uh, Jolla in the YouTube. Additionally, we have our chief designer, Martin Schule, commenting also on your questions. Uh, we have uh, here in the studio with me, our head of Tampere, Raine Mäkeläinen. And uh, we will be monitoring also IRC channel MER meeting. So that is the same uh, IRC channel which we use for the community meetings. Uh, and in additionally, we have a bunch of other sailors as well. So at least uh, use eyes there, making sure our audio and video stream is, is up and running. Uh, so you can use MER meeting for the questions and comments and you can use YouTube uh, for questions and comments and we will try to answer those. Uh, I think most practical is, is after the after the demo part is over and then uh, uh, also during the session uh, between the guys that are, are monitoring the, the chats. And today I think we have something like 145 attendees so this is this is fun to be starting out this series of webinars so uh, agenda is that first i'll show you gestures that are enabled by default in the operating system and then i will show uh, some advanced uses of the, the buttons of the device and then go on to the gestures that are more advanced type and are not enabled by default but which you can enable from the settings uh, then i'll show uh, configurability of uh, events view and lock screen so that uh, how to get a shortcuts you like uh, on those screens and, and have a quick access to the features you use the most and finally, I'll show a couple of useful features of building apps and the operating system. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this webinar and I hope that you will find uh, some features you have not found out before. So, without any further delay, let's just get started then. So the first gesture is the one that is probably the most useful and uh, the one that uh, you will use often. And this is my favorite as well. So just double tap the screen to wake it up and then swipe to get to the home screen. Uh, Another one that you are, of course, using always is, is just this generic swipe from the edge. So swipe from the edge goes always back to home screen. Another one in this home view is just swiping to the events view and swiping back to the home view. And if you have a, a partner space or, or super app, then you might swipe to that as well. Uh, then uh, long tap is a very often used gesture as well. 
So the typical use case is to enter into edit mode. So for example, uh, or, or get the context menu. So for example, in the, in the phone app, if I long tap here to Karsten, it will open the context menu. And in the top row, you can see that there's the phone number that was used for this particular call, the duration of the call. So I talk one minute, 40 seconds with Karsten. And then there's the options uh, which can I, I use. So I'll open the contact card here and you can see Karsten's contact there. And swipe back to home. And one other use for the long tap is to enter the edit modes. So for example, here in the home screen, I will long tap the screen and the home screen enters to edit mode. And now I can close applications. So I'll just close this uh, phone application now just by clicking on the X. And then I tap again and it, and it, it goes back to the normal mode. Then uh, on the app grid, again, long tap on icon enters into the edit mode. And I can create a folder by dragging an icon to another icon. And now we have a new folder. Tap background again for the normal mode, then tapping on the icon. And uh, here is the contents of that folder. If I want to then drop an item from the folder, I can just drag it oh. and here drop it here on the bottom to drop it from the folder. Again, going to the edits view, if I want to uninstall an application, I can then just uh, tap of X here in the edit mode. So now it's removing the calculator, but okay, I'll just cancel. So tap on the remorse timer to cancel. I want to keep my calculator. Uh, let's take good in the math. And finally, uh, one last use for the, the long tap gesture is to enter a temporary orientation lock. So for example, I have uh, some photos here. Just one, apparently. So what normally happens is, is when I rotate the device, it follows the orientation. But uh, if I hold and rotate, it will lock the orientation. So as you can see, now it's locked. And if I'm on my bed or something like that, and I'm using an application with two orientations, this is quite handy. And it rotates, when I rotate it back a couple of again, then it again works in the normal mode of, of dynamically rotating the user interface. Then uh, a bit about the virtual keyboard use. So uh, I'll open up the browser now. Tap on the URL. As you can see, the virtual keyboard opens up down there when I have tapped the URL and takes a, quite a lot of space. I can just swipe it down to hide it. And then I see also the bookmarks I had uh, below the, the keyboard. Now, if I want to uh, add a desktop shortcut, I can just again long tap on the, on the YouTube Yolla channel. I will add that to application grid. Okay, that name looks reasonable. I will just click on the save. And I have it then here on the application grid as a shortcut. So just tapping it there and it will bring up the Yolla's YouTube channel now. Uh, a bit more about the virtual keyboard. So I will uh, open up messages. I will have my chat with Jaakko here. And uh, just 
clean this text here. So one of the things here is I have enabled two keyboards. So my native language is of course Finnish, uh, and but usually at work I need to discuss English with with, with our customers and uh, with uh, English speaking employees. So I have also English keyboard enabled here. And switch, switching between keyboard is just by long tapping here on the space bar. And uh, I will write something for Jaakko. Hi, how are you doing? But apparently I make the typo, now I need to edit. So I will just push the, push the arrow. So it's not mies, it's mites. So let's put the T there. And now I have a correct, correct uh, sentence there, which is makes sense in Finnish. Uh, another thing that you can do is, is long tap here on the text and then it selects and first it selects the word and if you keep pressing it selects the whole sentence and it made the copy so here's the contents of the clipboard if i want to adjust i will just grab here uh, on the on the edge of the selection and again it zooms out nicely uh, to do show me uh, where the selection is and uh, Similarly, I can take it from the oh, no, so on the edge, on the other side of the selection as well. So this would be nice. Mites mene would be a nice copy. And uh, if I accidentally copy something and I want to be sure that it's not on the clipboard for permanently or, or until I make another selection, I can just long tap here and then select uh, clear clipboard. And as you can see, the clipboard has been cleaned and the selection is no longer there. Uh, so there was a question about the MOE support on the Virtua keyboard. So that is one of the features that we have not yet have time to implement. And uh, it is something that we are aware of how important feature MOE is uh, in today's uh, chats, and it's it's on the backlog. But unfortunately, not, we have not done it yet. I'm not sure if there's a third-party solutions already or not. And maybe Martin can comment on the timing of the lock screen. Okay, so we covered the virtual keyboard mostly. Uh, then just back to the kind of uh, basic gestures. Uh, so this is how the dialog behaves. Let's see settings, for example. So uh, typical use case would be accepting and canceling something. So for example, this untrusted software. So untrusted software means that uh, it will install a RPM package. So you can sideload applications or packages with, with untrusted software. Otherwise, you will be needing to install the apps only from the YOLA store. But now I'll tap on the allowed one and then I get this dialog where, is the, where are the terms uh, with what are involved. And if I then swipe back, it will cancel it. And if I go the other way around, go forward, that will accept exactly like the, the dialog header says. So, uh, you can see the options from the dialog header. You can also push these. There, there are uh, buttons, but uh, I personally find it much more quicker to just swipe it around. Uh, 
And then one other nice feature is this uh, flip to silence. So my colleague here is, is calling me. So I should can just rotate the device to silence it. So I don't have to answer. And, and as you can see, the call was ignored and ended. So that's what you do when you are in the middle of a webinar and, and suddenly get a call. Uh, this is also a configurable feature so that uh, uh, if you have a, uh, you might have some some issues. Uh, some people have had some issues about inaccurate inaccurate interpretation of the flip gesture. So then you can just uh, disable this flip to silence here from the from the gestures settings. And uh, now we are on settings. So let's discuss about the settings that are uh, configurable. Uh, so one of the, the my one of my favorite settings is actually this quick app closing. So I'll enable it now. So quick app closing means that uh, you can swipe down from the top to close an application. Okay, it's so swiping down from the top now closes the gallery. So of course the downside of this gesture is that that uh, this menu that's used for uh, selecting ambience or, or locking the screen is now only available in the home view. So it's not available in applications since uh, it's the same gesture. But uh, I like it and I keep it enabled. Uh, another one that's that's quite nice is this um, quick events access so I enable it now and uh, then from this side I get to the events and from the other side I will get to the home screen so from this home screen and from the other side to events Uh, then uh, uh, about the buttons, I think I missed something, mixed my order of things. All right, so yeah, I, I think I missed a couple of the button use scenarios that I was going to show you in the first and that's kind of lost. So I showed you the double tap to unlock. Uh, there's another way to unlock the device. So it is this kind of swipe from edge to edge. And uh, again, I'll show you. So edge to edge. That's quite handy. Uh, the, personally, I use the double tap uh, more often. And then again, back on the settings. So in the developer mode settings, there's one nice option. So it's here in the show reboot option on top menu so i'll tap on that and now when i long press the power key for the top menu i have a new option there for the reboot of the device and especially if you're a developer or hacker and, and, and keep installing some stuff that's not uh, not the most stable it, it's useful useful to have the reboot option for the device Uh, 
Uh, then uh, about the configurability, uh, the events view is one of those places which you may want to configure. So let's go to the events view. So here on top is the kind of default configuration. So we have a, a bunch of toggles on top and then we have a bunch of quick actions here. Things like search the web that which opens browser search field. Uh, so if I want to customize this, I will press this uh, uh, gear wheel logo here. It will open the settings for the events view. Uh, and uh, then I'll uh, select shortcuts. So these are the default shortcuts which I have. But I have to say that uh, I never toggle Bluetooth on and off. I will change that and I will instead have a flashlight so it's, if my lights are out I can use it. And uh, let's take a look now. So here we have the flashlight. So I put it on and as you can see it's quite nice. Let's put it off. Uh, and go back to settings. And so basically you have these kind of on and off toggles here, but in addition there's shortcuts to different control panel, uh, different control panel. So if you want to open display or open sound and feedback from the uh, events view, that is certainly possible. Then we have the quick actions we saw. So for example, uh, I know where I am, I don't need that, but maybe I need to set an alarm so that uh, I know when to end the webinar. So there it is, set an alarm, and when I tap on it, it opens the clock, and uh, I can set an alarm there, but maybe we will just keep on talking as long as I have something to say. Uh, then Let's go back to the settings again. We have the lock screen. So this is quite handy for the stuff you want to access immediately when the device has uh, started up. So there's the lock screen settings. And uh, well, I already had the set here, but basically this is how you see it when the device is, is brand new. And you can add shortcuts here. So you can add, add those quick actions that were in the in the also available to the events view, but then you can also have an application directly on it. So, for example, I could have um, search the web for making a quick search. Then I could have a camera to take a picture, and of course, uh, as a as a Twitter addict, I need to have my favorite. Twitter client there as a shortcut as well. So I will just lock the screen, double tap to unlock, and the menu is right here. So opening up the camera, and you can kind of see what kind of a, a setup we have here for recording this stuff. And let's close it with the gesture. Yep. So then we have a one new feature on the 202. So or uh, on the two series at least. So the uh, making the screenshots. So for example, uh, I can go to messages. and select something with uh, text I don't understand. Now let's hide the keyboard. And if I press the volume keys, both at the same time, it makes a screenshot. I can just tap on that. And here's the screenshot. And I could now send it via MMS to tools. Anybody. Uh, 
and send it to Harry. Harry knows Chinese so well. Okay, so these two keys, so the volume keys together, something like uh, half a second, and it makes a screenshot. It's a super handy when you want to forward discussions that you are having with uh, people. Uh, then uh, that was pretty much the configurability. There's a couple of other things. Uh, for example, to multi-select, this is uh, in many applications that we have a, a lot of content. So these kind of grids or, or lists. Uh, the pull menu has a multi-selection. So now we are in the multi-select mode. So I can just tap these screenshots, which I don't want to use. And I can tap on the trash can to delete this. But uh, okay, well, let's delete this. And uh, similarly, you saw the remorse timer. It's important to know that remorse timer is not blocking your actions. So if you are certain what you do, just run, let it run. You don't have to let it run. You can just go forward. So for example, this here. I'm going to delete the remote start or starts to run, but I know it's for sure I okay, so I will just continue working instead. So you don't have to wait for the action to complete if you are sure. It is just for uh, canceling. So just delete, and then I can tap to cancel, or I can even have multiple remote timers running. So let's delete a bunch of images here. And it doesn't really block me from anything. One of the new features we had in the 202 is, is file manager. So uh, so it's under settings and there's there storage settings. So this shows the space used by the user data, by the system data, and uh, the memory card. So if I go to the user data, it gives me an overview first on, on what's, what's on my device. It looks like I have a bunch of other data and videos. And if I want to take a look from the pulley menu, I'll find the file manager. And if I want to take a look at the file, uh, this will launch kind of default handle for file types. Uh, screenshots, okay, there are none. Camera, no files. I wonder if I have anything. Yeah, there's some default images. So if I click on the image, it will open the gallery and, and show the image. So this is quite handy for, for taking a view what you have in your device and, and if you want to delete something so then you can just delete it and remove uh, release some space from your device uh, one of the other functions we have uh, in the settings is uh, handling of the memory card so uh, some of our devices you can remove the memory card uh, live so for example, in the tablet, you can just yank it out of the device uh, while you are using it, but it would be good to safely eject it instead of, uh, instead of just, uh, uh, just yanking it out live. So that you can use, so unmount, and, and then it unmounts the, the memory card. And I can mount it back. Also, then we have a um, couple of settings for the applications. So the built-in applications uh, have also settings for some of the features that um, that are maybe not less, not so much used or uh, or or a bit distracting on some cases uh, or advanced features. 
So one of those things is uh, SMS counter. So here we have apps and uh, message counter would be in messages. And there I will enable the character counter so that uh, you will know if it's one or many text messages. So then going back to the messages app. And as you can see, there's now the, the count. So you see how many messages you can still, how many characters you still have on your, or your text message. And of course, uh, this uh, application is for both the, the, the messaging and text messaging. And if it is a text message, then the message counter will be visible. But if it's not a text message, maybe Google Talk or, uh, or something else, then, then it will not show the, the counter. Uh, one other thing about the settings is, uh, is uh, the Android application settings. Uh, in particular, it's useful to, to know what version of an app you have. So, for example, I have this Telegram here, so I can see the Telegram version. Uh, it's quite dim on the on the uh, stream, but I can see the version here. But more important even is then the option to allow it to run on background. So, to save the device resources and, and controlling about the background activities to save battery is one important thing. But for messaging applications, uh, it is kind of handy to allow them to run on background and, and to allow them to automatically start in the boot up. So for that, we have this option, allow application background services to start from boot up. So this would mean that, uh, you know, next time I boot the device, the Telegram diamond would be running and I would be getting, getting messages right away instead of uh, uh, after the first time I started from the user interface. So that was pretty much the tips and tricks I wanted to show you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. If you have uh, any questions or comments, please go ahead. And uh, I will check, check the status of, of the where are we actually with the questions and comments? Okay, I see that uh, there's a bunch of questions that are, are interesting and, and challenging. Let's see, let's see, I'll give you my views on the YouTube comments. I think the guys have been, the guys have been uh, answering to them already a bit, but um, So unlock swipe to swipe gesture. Yeah, yeah we are looking at this uh, pocket calling issues now. I think we have been able to replicate this uh, and we have some understanding already uh, what we can do. But it is one of those things that uh, getting to a perfect solution is difficult. So it's, so it's, it's uh, of course combination of, of software and hardware. So the, 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 the proximity sensor needs to work reliability in all cases and, and uh, then uh, the software needs to, needs to work with that. And there was already this kind of a um, workaround or, or do, I, do I enable it 
uh, to be disable the call log uh, direct calling, but that's that's not great. Yeah, yeah. So there's certain bands on the 4G that are have been problematic on the Yola C, and we are working on the fix. And uh, of course, in Finland and in Tampere, we have uh, uh, all, all kind of bands available, and so quite good coverage in the areas we are now. Uh, mounting the memory card mounting yeah so we are working on 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 limited support so it we cannot promise that we you will be store anything on the on the memory card but that i think it would make sense to have for example the camera and being able to store images when you take them to the sd card Uh, so at, at the moment it's it's mostly for reading and backups, but we do have a plan to to expand to to make it more usable. So the swipe to so the so swipe from side to side to to unlock, uh, it's it's both in Yolla C and Index Aquafis. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's on the other hardware, but maybe the other guys can confirm this. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so this was a this was a uh, introduction seminar mostly on the on the on the use of the device and trying to go through the gestures and going through the advanced gestures and stuff. Uh, the 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 next one is about the the community portal, but we do have this more developer oriented uh, seminars planned as well. And of course, uh, we had the Yolla Love Day uh, presentations, those are online online on the Yolla YouTube channel. And uh, similarly, I think we are going to, to more advanced topics as well later. So yes, there will be developer-oriented webinars for sure from the Yolla engineers. And we just... Uh, since, since Jona kind of did this like a generic service programming, we, we need to maybe uh, narrow it down to, to more uh, uh, specific audiences and, uh, and, and see then that what kind of things would be most useful. So Bulk transfer calendar entries from Yolla to Yolla C. Uh, should backup cover those? Yeah, I think I think backup should store calendar entries, but if it doesn't, it's a bug. Uh, Battery optimization planned. So I, I think this refers to Yolla C and Index Aquafis devices. I think on the Yolla we have quite good battery uh, battery uh, energy savings. Uh, the, the Yolla C and Index Aquafis, there are some specific use cases where the battery does not last. And, uh, and uh, we will fix those once we figure out which ones, which ones are uh, the kind of reasons. One of the things has been, for example, there has been cases where the tracker has gotten stuck and, and eating CPU. 
and uh, tracker update is, is in the plans and should be coming in in couple of maybe next release or the one after that and that hopefully will help uh, for that particular issue uh, no not really together yolla.com is really the place where we kind of expect to see the uh, bugs filed against applications and operating system but then if you know that the issue is on a lower level certain lower level component then of course uh, filing it to mer projects Baxilla is is the right thing to do so if it's a technical issue uh, and uh, then the open source applications we have there's not many but there are a couple so there's the the selfish browser is in github and similarly selfish office is in github so you can also file directly to those to those issue trackers on, on github Will there be more optimization to options to disable limit Android permissions? Yeah, this is something that uh, has been under discussion. I don't think we have like a concrete plan on how to get forward with that. But, but the, the kind of security is one of those things. Security and privacy are one of those things that that um, we have identified as, as a kind of important topics and where we want to improve. And of course, Android applications as a, as a, is a kind of necessity for more many use cases, and therefore we do need to consider what what can we do to improve the user's control on what those applications can do. Yeah, the CVE. I don't remember. <laughs> by heart and uh, I will have to come back to that maybe in the com next community meeting or something like that Yeah, so some of the YOLO apps uh, are the ones that you can print, remove from the device. So those ones that are available from the YOLO store. So that's the kind of policy we have. So basically, I should have all the apps on my device. So, so so as you can see, calculator, email, media, notes, uh, documents, weather, uh, developer mode, and calendar are the ones you can uninstall. Uh, those are available then on the on the Ola store. So if you uninstall from the device UI, you need to have a place where to restore those applications from. And uh, that's why we, we have not kind of a expanded the set now because it, it requires some some additional work to make the applications available via the store and, and via the, the the images so but the, if you if you don't have those you have still quite minimal image And for the kernel, kernel issue, the, the CVE 2016 So we are working on kernel update and it should fix numbers of these CVEs uh, on the Yola C and, and Aquafish. The clicking noise 
with camera is a, is a known is a known issue. So for the feature requests, these uh, downloaded documents. Uh, so basically, downloads folder would be on the memory card. It sounds like that the, that's a reasonable request and shouldn't be too much too much work. So we can consider consider that. But of course, these are always such that that the, that I say now that we are investigating things, but then the engineering team needs to uh, evaluate what it actually means. And many times, something something that I cannot foresee happens and. Uh, or that then the timetables timetables are also something that that uh, uh, change because we get nowadays many requests from customers. I mean the the, the kind of license customers, and uh, they typically typically have everything and uh, so quickly. So so sometimes sometimes it gets some time before we can get get to these kind of improvements. Uh, so when is the next update planned? So uh, well, actually we are just working on the finalized uh, 202 release. So it's in the early access at the moment. Uh, there was a kind of a last minute issue we noticed, so that certain Facebook functionalities the API we were using was going to be deprecated by the Facebook. So we had to uh, update the use of those APIs, and that kind of delayed to getting that 202 version out to the out of the early access and, and to all. But we have the, the Facebook things now fixed, and uh, I think it will be one or two weeks uh, before we can roll it out to everybody. And uh, obviously. Then after 202, we'll be working on the next release. So we have a 203 branch already, but that branch is targeting the touring device. So it doesn't really contain any improvements to core selfies. It's just uh, adaptation to, to the touring device. But anyway, that, that branch is, is kind of out there with the, the limited or with the touring phone. So uh, for for the people that had it, have it, and then we are working on 204, which is again this like a generic public release for the all all of the devices, and uh, I'm not going to <laughs> promise any time schedule here, but uh, as as we used to have this kind of a, a cycle of of one month real between the releases, we are we are kind of more or less targeting to get back to that kind of rhythm. I'm not sure if it is uh, actually possible now, but uh, that's that's something that that uh, we want to have more frequent updates than we have had during this year. So hopefully 204 will follow relatively quickly after we get 202 out.
So there's a question about high pitch noise when on mobile data. Uh, I have to admit that I haven't heard about this issue before. So I don't know if the guys online have. If the guys online have have heard about it. Uh, paid apps and, and to store. Yeah, so the uh, approach there is now that we are working on enablers for the paid downloads for the YOLA apps first. So I'm hoping that we can get that done. There is kind of a hopefully a customer case for it so that we could have certain commercial content on, on the store. And if that goes well, uh, then obvious next step would be the paid apps, but um, we will have to have uh, this this downloadable paid content first from the Yola. So the, the problem with paid apps, of, of course, is that, that if you want to become the kind of a middleman between the developers and the and the end users, there's all sort of legal issues to sort out and uh, taxation and dollar borders and, and whatnot. So so th those have been the risks and of course the so it, it's more than engineering, it is the kind of a capability of the organization, the legal department, the business development to come up with the, uh, the rules and mechanisms and the payment providers and then uh, handling the payments forward. So so that is a, that has been a challenging topic. Uh, that's a good question about uh, the, any new hardware and uh, we are of course we love devices and we want to get new devices out there. We are now licensing the operating system and, and unfortunately it's, it's always the customer of ours that needs to announce the devices. So we cannot go ahead and announce devices on behalf of, of our customers. So there was a question about the metadata or date information on the picture metadata. I think we have a fix for that on 202. Well, uh, but I think this, I have seen this bug, yes. Uh, and uh, I, I'm not sure if the, the, the fix landed, but at least the, the, this, there's uh, there's a bug and it has been working on, but I'm not entirely sure if it was already out on 202. How to buy Android applications from official Google store? <laughs> yeah, uh, so, so we are not officially supporting Google Play, so I don't have a clue how that would work. Yeah,
So uh, one of the things actually is that um, for the developer topics, uh, we could use your input. So we have this com ma uh, mailbox, community at yolla.com. So you could uh, enter your wishes that what kind of uh, developer webinars you would like to see in this series and uh, your ideas on that that mailbox. So it's community at yolla.com. And of course, we have the developer mailing list, which is one other option to deliver feedback. Yolla uh, tablet energy savings. So it's not something we work on that much. So uh, obviously, there's a limited set of Yolla tablets out there, and uh, and uh, we don't pay. We haven't paid that much attention when we have had the the Yolla C and 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 especially the Index Aquafish in in such a such a uh, let's say there's been a lot of requirements on that and lots of changes to get that stuff working well. Uh, I think the 202 actually improves the battery usage a bit on tablet. Uh, it might be related to some of the fixes that we have done on the other platforms, uh, but uh, but we haven't. Uh, exactly identified the cases where the uh, battery uh, is consumed let's say more than normal so of course the the hardware the chipset the the display and uh, and uh, the increased display resolution requires some more kick out of the uh, processor and the, the applications but in addition there are clearly cases where the device is doing something that's not optimal and consumes more battery than it should. And uh, I think one of one or two of those cases, the two or two actually fixes. Um, but uh, it's it's more or less a side effect on the optimization on the on the other devices than the tablet specific optimizations as such. And and unfortunately we cannot focus too much time on the on the tablet issues because of course we need to go forward and focus on the, the new devices and, and the customer cases we are having. So the uh, here we go uh, application formerly known as as Gear Maps and even before that Nokia Maps. It's an Android application, yes, and and there's uh, not a there is no plan to make a native application at the moment. So this is the kind of thing that where we need to very carefully uh, choose where to put our efforts. So we had a really good. Uh, arrangement with the here company to get the here we go to Yola store and it is really a, like a um, world-class application on its own millions of downloads on, on the on the Android side and uh, competing against that with our limited resources so making things like uh, voice navigation and uh, uh, search and offline navigation and all the kind of functions that it has would really consume a lot of resources from our our UI team. So that is why we kind of ended up in the solution that it's easier to have just one good solution instead of developing our own and, and using all our UI resources on that. And unfortunately, it means that you need to utilize the Android runtime. I know some people don't like it, but on the devices that have two gigabytes of RAM, uh, the Android runtime Runs real nice, multitask real nice, and on those those ones, the the uh, here we go is a really good solution on on your mapping needs and and uh, navigation.
So there's a question about the WhatsApp. Uh, I don't understand what's the problem with it. Uh, I think it's working just fine. Uh, I think the Aptoid maybe offers an older version by default, but but if you ch then check the Aptoid again, then it uh, offers an update and then it works. Then question about the Skype. Well, uh, I, I have understood that it works just fine on our device, but, but personally I'm just using the computer. I haven't seen any, any bugs about Skype on, on Yolla. So the, the Skype should be available in Aptoid and then should, should just run fine on, on Yolla. Okay, this is uh, related to the community. Yes, uh, we should be expanding the CB tap uh, group uh, to, the, to the selected members of the community program. So uh, that requires some work. So the 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 bit that access has um, is a bit of manual work to our services team to to push new members on it. And uh, I would like to have that automated a bit more and to kind of uh, handle a bit, bit more organized fashion. And uh, after that, we could expand it a bit more. Yeah, this uh, webinar, we kind of uh, checked a couple of alternative alternative uh, ways to broadcast this and we ended up in this YouTube, YouTube because it's kind of well known and, and uh, widely available and people have accounts. But uh, we may consider, of course, tomorrow's webinar is naturally we are going to use, utilize the same platform here since we now know how this works. But uh, we can uh, can uh, consider other alternatives as well. But um, of course, it requires some testing from our side and, and, and no knowing. Yeah, so <laughs> good comment about uh, about the the C B taxes or, or B taxes actually is that that uh, we are looking forward to, to expand that and of course we, we will always try to start from the, the active members and the, the ones that contribute uh, back the most and, and get those people in the first. So you will if you <laughs> You're you're active and good person. You will be noticed more.
Yeah, so at least the, we did quite a bit of studying how to get this setup working and I hope you kind of got to see the device well and, and had the voice clear enough and the picture clear enough. And I think uh, Raina and Martin and guys have done a good job in, in, in answering the questions as well. Okay, it's starting to be nine o'clock here in Finland, and uh, uh, thank you for joining this webinar. And uh, let's hope that uh, this has been useful for you. And tomorrow there's the next one about the the Poodle. So it's our translation tool where community members can contribute to the translations. And of course, it's kind of interesting to. For you guys, you can get to see a bit about next release, since there's the strings from the next release already available before the release is out. Uh, Simulas Leleva will be holding that tomorrow at the same time and at the Yolla channel again. So, so I'm signing out here. Thank you for attending.